ladies and gentlemen our next devops leader is joining us on stage who comes with us with 20 plus years of experience in a unique blend of saas and industrial sales experience a true advocate of continuous learning he embodies the spirit of curiosity and embraces new challenge with enthusiasm his passion for innovation and pragmatic approach to problem solving has earned him a reputation as a visionary leader capable of turning business visions into reality. Throughout his career, he has demonstrated a zest and zeal for driving change, pushing the boundaries of what's possible and creating impactful solutions that drive business growth and success. Today, our speaker joins us on stage to share insights and experiences on product development framework from zero to one, a SaaS digital transformation. His talk promises to inspire all of us to approach our endeavors with a never stop learning attitude and an unwavering commitment to, to turning ideas into action. Everybody, let's get the ball rolling as I now invite on stage the exceptional Giome Pano, Executive Director and Head of Product Southeast Asia at Senate Pulse Singapore. Let's open our minds and hearts to absorb the wisdom he's about to share, as I'm certain it's going to be a very enlightening and enriching experience for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for our speaker today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. I think most of the audience has been tired after the, <laughs> the talk about security or checking their bank account if everything is fine. Um, so this afternoon, I wanted to talk uh, around uh, product development and DevOps. Um, so I'm, my name is Guillaume. I've been 15 years in uh, sales. I've been 10, 10 years uh, in software and SaaS. I graduated as an engineer and did an MBA because I was bored at, <laughs> at work. And uh, what I like to do is uh, everything around technologies and these days, like most of you guys also is to do some uh, AI stuff. Uh, the latest cool things I've done is uh, AI girlfriends, so my girlfriend, she's not happy, but uh, that's something you really need to explore these days because this is uh, something we, we're gonna talk during the next sessions um, with one of the speaker, but that's something you need to, to look into even in your daily work. Uh, I work for Simples for about one and a half year now. Uh, my role is uh, head of product in South Asia. So basically, what does it mean? We have to create product from zero to one. So the three main product we are building and finishing now is a one digital bank white labeling uh, that we have built in 12 months, uh, where uh, usually banks will spend about three to four years. We built uh, RM dashboard, is a relationship manager dashboard, so it's a 360 view for the wealth, wealthy people. And we also have some uh, risk dashboard, which is quite complex about detecting uh, fraud or uh, misbehavior in uh, organization and the bank when it's time to uh, manage portfolios. So let's start. Here is the agenda. Um, some intro. Uh, the understanding quickly about the product management, the role of the product management in a SaaS. Uh, stage zero, how do we do some uh, conceptions uh, and ideations? The prototype development, I give you some framework and the importance of the user feedback, some KPI, OKR, something you need to have to in your toolbox, and how do we tackle some challenges and get some solution when you uh, develop your product? This all links with the DevOps, the developer and the product manager when they work all together, it has to be collaborative. We're gonna talk about it quickly and then a conclusion uh, for the roadmap to success. So without further ado, uh, just to give you some hint, um, the SaaS business is about 885 billions in 2024. It keeps growing about almost 10% every year. And you can see all the companies are moving to uh, SaaS. Why? It's pretty simple, you have recurring revenues, your valuation of the company from, let's say consulting, which is manpower is times two, SaaS is time five. If you go SaaS and crypto, it's time 50 to times uh, 100. So no wonder companies are moving towards more and more software for that particular reason. 
185 billion is around three times the IBM revenue, just for information. Understanding the product management, um, I think what you need to understand is when it's time to build uh, some product, it's really important to keep in mind a life cycle so your product never gonna stop once you start it. And the second thing is we love as an engineer to build cool stuff, right? We create, we put this outside, and then we figure out this is not working. Why? Because we miss the market fit. If you have a market fit, you're going to grow two and a half faster. Everyone here who has a little bit of experience in terms of entrepreneurship, you will quickly realize that your first idea is basically not exactly what the market is willing to pay for. So spending a little bit of time trying to find the right uh, market fit, really focusing on the client, even is very easy to say, is a really key and give you some uh, clear result if you're right where you should be for you, with your product. So the role of the product management in uh, SaaS, um, I think the Elliott uh, report says that 84% of the SaaS company are investing in customer success resource. Uh, to enhance the product you chase. What does it mean? Actually, when you build a product, companies spend a lot of money to try to understand uh, their clients, and then from that, they will upgrade and create the proper roadmap for, for their client. And this is where they will create, basically, the most values. Um, it's not just about building a product. Nowadays, we are all clients, and what we want is to see some value when we put the money. This is very simple to say, but if we are not customer-centric, it, it starts from the project management, from company vision, to the developer and the DevOps and the guy who tests at the end of the day, uh, there's a high chance that it's not gonna work. So we heard a lot of um, companies spending a lot of money, a lot of startup fail, and there's a good reason for that, is because basically we totally overlooked um, this insight about our client, or customers, basically. So the stage zero, uh, which is around the, the conceptualization, uh, the CB Insight report says that 42% of the startup fails. In reality, only 4% of the startup will make it within the first five years. Why is it so? It's pretty simple. They are wrong in a market fit. It's true for startup, but it's also true for big companies. In our company, we have 11 products, I can tell you, they're not gonna all survive uh, through the cycles. But because we are big and there's enough money, some of them can fail because the other one will take over and uh, pay back uh, all the investment. So what you need to do um, from the product management perspective is really to spend time around understanding your client and do your market research. Why is it important? Because even if you have done your product, what happened at the end when the developers start to do the release and everybody is happy, we need to do marketing. And then suddenly the marketing say, who are my targeted clients? Well, wait a second, we didn't know from the beginning? Okay, so it just, if it sounds familiar, it just tells you that very often we want to create and build, but we forget uh, where the value is created from the client from the beginning. So that should be the first things that uh, we should really focus on is how do we fit and tackle this uh, market pain point for our uh, client, basically? If you don't bring a solution, people won't buy it. So this is something, um, this is a 12-step 12 12 step, um, framework that you can use and you should use if you are creating a new product or SaaS, uh, SaaS product, sorry. Um, the first one is really important to have clarity in your vision mission. Once you have this, everyone will understand about where you guys are going. And this is very, very important. Then you have these ideas, then you need to make sure you have defined your target audience and your customer that they are real. So most likely, how you're gonna do that, you're gonna have a look anywhere at your competition to see if you are not the only one in the middle of the ocean. You will define your product positioning. Uh, are you expensive, high value, cheap? cash cow, uh, targeting a huge crowd or the niche market. And you're gonna look at your competitive analysis just to understand about, okay, uh, my product needs to worth this amount of money because as the developer here, 
when we put all the cost of the license and the software, etc., everything is not open source, and you realize that it costs you one million just to run the software, and your client is ready to pay 800K, it's game over for you. So this is very important, actually, to understand that from the beginning. Once your strategy is relatively clear, you can go into your role and initiative where um, you're going to get your big goal. Uh, let's say I'm going to create a digital bank, uh, white labeling, for example. And then underneath, you're going to define a smaller uh, initiative goals where you're going to cut this into pieces. So I'm going to create uh, a mini digital bank, white labeling, with only six functionalities. And I'm going to sell this to a, a broad market, for example. Let's say, I imagine all the Forex companies, they want to offer uh, small digital banking services to their client. They could tackle on that. This is my target. This is my audience. This is what I'm going to go for it. Once this is clear, then the team is around the table with the developer, and we're going to work on defining and prioritize the different features of this uh, mini digital bank that we want to build all together. Uh, we're going to start to work on the different features, the roadmap, the architecture, the DevOps, the security, which is very interesting because this is the last thing that we tackle usually on the project, but this is the first question when you go to a client to say, is it secure? Have you done the test? And it's like, oops. Uh, we need to finalize that. Um, so your roadmap is ready. You more or less uh, are clear with your user story and tasks. You start to quantify the amount of work. And if everything is fine, then you can start prioritizing your backlog uh, with the developer the, doing the, uh, sorry, um, uh, with your Scrum Master, etc., you're going to start to prioritize the backlog. And then here we go. Uh, we jump into the DevOps with the sprint planning. And you manage the sprint and do the release step by step, etc. So this framework is very important. If you have been through this and you have a problem usually on the sprint and release in this, is probably you have to go backwards and then you will see there is something which is not super clear in this process. There could be a few more steps, which is uh, production, uh, all security testing, etc., etc. This is not there, or even scaling. This is not there, but this gives you a pretty good framework if you want to do from zero to one. So let's say you put everything uh, into your Jira. Everything is clear. All the team are ready. Everybody is very excited. Now it's time to do it. Um, you need to make sure. Uh, you are really addressing the, the customer problem. So something that we don't do usually, everything is on a paper, everything on Jira, the guy already set it up, uh, setting up the server, etc. And then nobody is really looking at what happened from before and after these few weeks because actually you already changed a little bit the scope, right? And this is good, but you need to verify if you are still addressing exactly the, the value proposition you plan at the beginning, right? 80%, 88% of the product manager believe that you need to have a flexible workflow uh, to be successful in your product development. So what does it mean? You need to have your uh, value proposition and it has to be flexible enough also with the development because not everything can be a program or plan through uh, the development. You will have a lot of problems. So you will iterate. You may even if you have the best UI UX guy, when everything is implemented, you figure it out, uh, oh, that's not really good. And when you go to a client, I bet about 30 to 50% of the time, you have a lot of remark and you need to take this into account pretty quickly. The longer you wait, the more costly it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be, and then you will have a lot of problem uh, internally. Uh, this is another implementation framework you, you can take uh, as a takeaway. So this is something that we use internally. So for example, you have a new client. They want to create a small product or MVP. Start and help them to define a product vision. Uh, try to define with them about um, the discovery of the business. Why do you want to do that? Uh, try to create some uh, customer journey. Oh, I want my client to log in and be able to purchase a mortgage, for example, as we heard just before. Uh, and then you start to do some UI UX prototyping on Figma. Then everything 
seems quite okay. Uh, you're going to work on a high-level architecture uh, to have a rough idea about how big is the project or maybe you realize that you just want to have something simple. And you create a targeting, target operating model to see uh, what, what value you can get out from that and what are the objectives. And then, last one, you do the prioritization and the release plan uh, of your project. When everything is ready, you can jump into the development uh, in an agile way with a different sprint planning, retrospective, etc. And then you can start uh, basically to release uh, some of the, the development and test, etc. When everything is fine, you go in a UAT and you, you may be able to go live for your first version. So you're out, your product is with a client, you already get, uh, you already get some feedback. Um, there is an interesting study from Microsoft to say 90% of the consumer consider customer service when choosing a product. From my experience, we never talk about it at the beginning, right? And when you see this, this is totally crazy because you basically start to create a product without thinking about the customer service or how you're going to tackle this when the decision from the consumer to buy your product is taking to account the, cons the customer service, right? So chat, uh, how do you manage ticket, documentation, all these kind of things which usually come at the end, really at the end of the end, right? But when you try to close your first client, even with your MVP, they will ask this kind of question and then the security guy you will tell them, hey, I need a solution for tomorrow, right? <laughs> um, so <clears throat> the, the customer feedback should be an integral part of your product management uh, process or cycle. Easy to say, but very hard to put it in. Uh, so this is where the product manager is supposed to bring also some of the tech guy to the client, some of the sales guy to bring the project manager to the client. And here really what's going on, because the sales guy will say, we're going to do these features where the tech guy say, oh, it's going to take six months and it's already sold for one month, right? So, and then start to have the funny things internally when <laughs> the customer service is already ready to receive the calls, actually. <laughs> um, all right, so this customer feedback is very important because this is the, the person who will pay for the added the value or the added value you're going to create with your team and your DevOps, etc. Uh, this is another uh, framework you can take into account. Uh, so I use this for our digital bank. It's called the uh, Rise Core Prioritization. So here we can't read it, but just I will help you there. So on the left side is the features uh, that we just list with the client and internally. Um, then you have the pain point we are trying to address with these different features. And then we have the strategic value that internally we think this will bring to the market and compare to our strategy, right? So our top CEO, they have a strategy. Are we in line with the strategy? Then we give a score. Then there's a confidence score that this will have an impact. Uh, so we create the feature. It's great. Is it really going to have an impact for our business? And then we just try to estimate a percentage on that. Then the next column is effort, uh, how much our dev team will have to spend to do this feature, because if you take ages, no point. If it's very costly, no point, right? And the last, the blue column is a customer value. Hey, dear customer, how much do you value these uh, features, for example, for you? Will you pay for it? How much? Is it very important? Do you need it tomorrow, for example? So you put this into a formula, then you have like a scoring system. And then you can reprioritize for your business. OK, this is everything I have. Then you can quantify, start to quantify the amount of work with your developer. And you can get your budget. And then you get your budget approved. And then you can start to roll this out with the dev team, et cetera, et cetera. There's, the last column is quite interesting is business priority. It's something uh, because we are an organization with different business units. Some business unit may say, oh, this priority is a bit lower score, but I need it because this will open a door for my business and sell the entire system. So let's say I do a digital bank with only payment, and the guy say, yeah, but if you had the insurance feature, 
I can see about 20 clients uh, who are doing insurance and offer their digital bank. So this will change a little bit, basically, the scoring at the end, and that's an important point. Um, once you have all your lists, uh, you can do your roadmap, basically. So you have many different ways of, to represent this. This one is done in three parts. Uh, you have the basic uh, features, depending on certain segments. And then you can put the breakthrough and the description. So the description is usually far, far, far away. Um, but uh, the basic is more or less what is going to happen in the next three to six, nine months. Breakthrough is in one or two years. If you are lucky, if your roadmap is not changing every six months in reality. So important thing also that we do uh, internally, we do the OKR and the KPIs uh, for the one who are familiar. This is quite important. Uh, we talk internally, or, uh, internally sorry, around the uh, ARR. So is an uh, annual uh, recurring revenue, means every month how much we get over a period of 12 months. Uh, it's great to sell, but how much it costs me to get this client. So the CAC is customer acquisition cost. I pump 50,000 uh, on my Google ads or LinkedIn ads. I get a lead, I need 10 leads, so it's 100K, but the client sign, sign 1.5 million. Okay, fine, I take it, I put this in my margin. The CLV, the client signed for five years, so 12 time, uh, five years, five times ARR, and that you get your customer lifetime value. And the churn rate, uh, if you have a lot of clients, for example, you need basically to define about how many are losing because my product is crap, or maybe your competition is super aggressive. So that's the key, key KPI. You have plenty of others, but this one works pretty well. And there's an interesting survey the fastest growing companies report a 2.1 LTV to CAC ratio. So that's very interesting because you need to have minimum 2.1. So LTV is the uh, like five years time the annual recurring revenue and CAC is your customer acquisition. If you have a minimum 2.1, then you have high chance that uh, your company is gonna grow very fast. Why? It's quite obvious. It means you have margin and with this margin you can pump money in your development but also in your marketing. All right, so uh, some of the challenges and uh, solutions uh, you have when you, you do your first product, it's basically um, uh, the customer acquisition, which is usually a big headache. So you finish your product, everybody is you, you, ha, and then you start to realize that the marketing needs to, to start and it's gonna take you another six to nine months. Your boy's getting crazy because the business life cycle is by far too long. So. When you do a product, you need to start the marketing pretty quickly, and you need to start also uh, the sales activity on the background as well. Um, so to overcome the, this challenge, uh, yeah, I just mentioned about the marketing. Uh, you may need to have the documentation ready because the client will ask it from the day they will sign. Uh, and you may need to think about how do you optimize uh, some of the cost from the beginning. So one example, uh, for us, we didn't realize how much the license of integrating many part, third parties cost. So, for example, um, for the one who know Trilio, for example, this is the SMS to receive to validate uh, um, your account. There is a charge every year. There is a charge per SMS. If you don't take this into account, it's going to be quite high. So a bank, some of the bank, why they fail, is because they have dormant account and they still pay some of these third parties. And that's why they go bankrupt in Europe. People shift to bank, but they don't, cannot close the bank account and they have a running cost, which is super high. All right, so uh, collaborative role between the DevOps, uh, the developer, the product manager. Uh, so we all know everybody is unique, but everybody has to work together from different locations. So sometimes it's like a big, big party, but sometimes it's also like a big battle, <laughs> uh, but usually, uh, from my experience, we all make it all together. This is pretty cool. Uh, where it's a bit more complicated when we, we have the management and the salespeople. So, uh, I think from all the tech guy here, important to stay all, uh, all solidarity all together, and we achieve usually great things all together. 
Um, there is something super interesting is uh, also this report saying that effective DevOps practice recover 25, 24 times faster from failure if they are all together. So you have a problem, it's fixed within a day. If you have the team completely broken, it's going to take you a month. Sounds familiar? <laughs> Um, so, this is just something very uh, generic, but I think it's important to keep an eye on the, the, the role of each other, the mutual respect between the team, and we still need to have a proper shared vision from the top management. Then, when you glue people together, they can achieve a lot of great things. Uh, in terms of tools, I think in the different room, a lot of people already talk about it, but uh, Jira, Trello, all the GitHub, everything which facilitates the work all together is critical. And uh, something which uh, also makes us very exciting is when we learn from each other. Right? This is what keeps us basically in a, in a company for a longer term. And what is the result when everything works well? Well, this is uh, what we built uh, from Trust Bank. This gives you some, some idea on the left how much it costs. It's a little bit crazy, but it's more than that even. And that's what happened when it's not an exact copy, but where you can create a digital bank and it takes you six to ten months to go to market and it costs you uh, ten times cheaper uh, when everything will work well, basically. Some conclusion. Um, I think for me the most important and very interesting part is another study from OpenView revealed that if you improve the retention of your teams by 1%, you get a 7% increase uh, in the company evaluation. So I need to show this to my boss one more time. So, so especially when it's time for salary increase, right? And bonuses. <laughs> it's, 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 so this is very interesting, right? We, we, we never thought about it, but we all know from our heart this is also true, right? If I want to stay, I will work. It's because I enjoy it and I work better and I have a higher productivity which means we deliver faster, less problem, and for sure, we sell, more, uh, we sell better product to our client, basically. All right, um, just on time. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, I hope today you learn a couple of things or get a few takeaways from the product management, but for the developer and the DevOps, it's important to, be, to work all together. And if you have any questions, feel free now or when I'm out of the stage. Thank you very much.